Okay, good morning, Commissioner. It's Sunday, uh, December 20th. The end of the year is here. <laughs> Wait, let, make no mistake. It is the most wonderful time of the year. <laughs> You know, I um, recently celebrated a birthday and it's just this pandemic has made everything um, just different, just different. You know, we've been really um, uh, firm in our stance about staff and their gatherings outside of work. But we know that this is a time that families want to get together, that co-workers who've missed each other terribly want to get together. But we've seen some um, pretty creative virtual gatherings happening during that time. And, you know, this is just over the next couple of weeks, we are clearly over the biggest hump of this. I think the vaccine offers a lot of promise. Um, so hopefully, you know, we're, we're over the worst of it, but we can't take our foot off the gas. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. So, Commissioner, I think there's there's really three main messages that you have for the staff today in this video. So the first one has to do with language of sanitizing work locations versus cleaning. And as um, you have directed um, us, each time a staff member in a regional office or facility tests positive for COVID-19, a notification is sent out to everybody in that work location, um, identifying the date the last time the person was in the location and then the steps that we have we have taken. Um, and the language in those memos is now different because it talks about sanitizing versus cleaning. Can you expand on that? Yeah, Ken, I want to just clarify that you are you and I we're we're certainly not the cleaning experts. We are nope. not the sanitizing <laughs> experts. We're not even the healthcare experts on this. Yeah. We've been, you know, kind of tagged with the messaging of that for staff. And as people have seen over, I go back to some of our, you know, very first uh, videos that we did. We were trying to just get the language, right. understanding what PPE meant. What is even a um, one of our earlier videos, I remember we talked about terminal cleaning versus deep cleaning. And so, you know, people think when you hear the term cleaning that you're going to see rug shampooed or you're going to see the walls painted. This everything that we do in this space that we're in right now is about killing this virus. So when we use the term cleaning loosely, it really means sanitizing all the products that we purchased um, were with the intent of killing this virus as quickly as possible over, you know, whether it's surfaces or the air or whatever that is. Mm -hmm. We have one of the tops in this industry, in that kind of occupational maintenance industry. John McCarthy came to us very highly regarded, and mm -hmm. we've been led by him in the engineering department to really um, understand just what it takes to make sure that our work places are sanitized appropriately. Um, Dr. Taylor, again, I don't know what we would have done without, um, you know, her medical her and healthcare yeah. expertise kind of yeah. weighing in and consulting. So the two of them, you know, leading their respective um, branches of, of the department have really been in lockstep with helping us understand every single one of those contact tracing um, episodes that we've had to do. It serves us no good right. to um, minimize or downplay or cut corners. None of that has happened. You know, what What you see in the communications that we've put out there is our effort to get the wording right, you know, at, at, but that has not shortchanged the efforts that we've made as a department to try mm -hmm. to keep us safe. There's no one group that's gotten more preferential treatment or the other. Right. There's no one location that has you know, of course, our congregate settings have a different look because there's a hospital associated with Solnit South and they have yeah. certain regulations and infection infection control, control. protocols yep. that other places don't have. But make no mistake, you know, when we're, when we're talking about a field office, when we're talking about central office, you know, we're looking at, OK, we have an individual that we're contact tracing. When was the last time that person was in the building? When was the le where was that person in the building? For how long? Who's been around that person? And then we start putting the pieces of the puzzle together every single time. And then we look at that particular contact tracing methodology and compare it to anybody else who's tested positive within a certain time frame. We have certain triggers for touch point cleaning and fogging or diff touch point sanitizing. See, I just did it again. Right. Yeah. Um, or sanitizing in a particular area. So this is a well-oiled machine. And when I think of when I take a step back and look at how DCF has handled this compared to some of our other 
um, sister state agencies that are struggling. I don't know what their processes processes yeah. are. I know what ours are, and I'm, I'll stand behind them any day. You know, I, I just need everybody to um, recognize that we are kind of, you know, methodically stepping through this every single time, and our messaging is evolving as a result of everything yeah. that we learn during this process. Yeah. So the spe specific um, sentence that um, we were referencing is, it says, quote, we have specific sanitizing protocols that are reviewed with each staff positive. So as you mentioned, then based on that protocol, we determine is a touch point sanitizing all the way up through other other means. To, to connect that point to our second main message, you just mentioned contact tracing. Mm -hmm. Now, some staff have asked via the COVID-19 mailbox and, 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 and through other channels about how do we determine, quote, close contact. So close contact, we have already de um, defined for staff as staff member with being within six feet or more, I'm sorry, within six feet for more than 15 minutes cumulative time over a 24-hour period with an individual who we know has tested positive for COVID-19. So let me say that again. They have been within mm -hmm. six feet for mm -hmm. more than 15 minutes a cumulative time over a 24-hour period with somebody who has been diagnosed with and tested positive for COVID-19. Mm -hmm. That's different than being in contact with somebody. Close yeah. contact then means we're going to notify you that we believe there's an exposure. That's right, and that that standard has been defined and refined by the CDC and the local public health. We've been, um, like I said, Dr. Taylor, um, listens very intently to any changes or modifications. There was just one on the quarantine length of time. So when you define close contact, it's not that you pass by this person or even worked in the same location as that person. Right. It's that within six feet. And because we all don't walk around with tape measures all the time, um, that six feet in, in your estimation is different than my six feet of estimation. That's why I can't drive home the um, importance of universal precautions enough. Exactly. You know, whether we're um, inside, because, you know, our workplace extends outside of our boundaries and we're going into people's homes or we're, you know, sharing spaces, whether or not it's um, in our 24 seven locations. Um, and we're sharing spaces with other people and we're not always cognizant of six feet. So we, the, the memo that will be sent out this week will emphasize you have to treat every situation as a potential for transmission. And that's what univer universal precautions means mm -hmm. that, you know, we're putting in all of these stop gaps from a, a, an employer standpoint, but even people who have done everything right have come in contact with this virus and become exposed. So yeah. this is not a shake your finger, you've tested positive. This is how susceptibly transmittable this is, that there are some that if you if you don't adhere to some of the guidance that were given, one misstep in that could result in a positive mm -hmm. that could result in somebody having a really bad, bad time with this. Sure, sure. So the last piece is that um, this week, a memorandum is gonna come out Mm. Um, that that looks at in-person responses and it focuses staff on the question, can the needs of the children and families be sufficiently addressed remotely? So we are now nine plus months into the pandemic. We've done a fantastic job uh, across the board mitigating the spread, but it is also a reminder that we need to be asking ourselves, about the manner in which we are serving the children and families that come in contact with our agency. And what else is involved in that memo and what do you what do you want to prepare the staff to see yeah. and, and the, as far as the takeaways? You, you know, what we've said right from the beginning is that um, we've been balancing the mission critical work with the protection of our staff. Those things have gone in lockstep with each other since March. Um, and, you know, there have been lots of divisions within central office or in our facilities that have had to maintain in-person response constantly throughout this because of the nature of the work that they do. I just um, got a briefing the other day about some fantastic work that's happening in fiscal and, you know, with Leslie Roy's department doing some really good job, really good work on some fiscal matters. Some of those things have to happen in person, you know, so when we think about um, 
uh, the work that happens uh, virtually or remotely, we've been given the opportunity to be able to figure out what components of our work um, that impact kids and families the most can be done in a remote environment. Ideally, all of it would be in person. Right. I've put this, the safety of our staff out in front of that. So when I ask everybody to take personal responsibility, I need you to walk with me on that because in your personal lives, if it's impacting the decisions that I've made to really put your safety first, we got to reckon that, reconcile that. Um, so when, you know, the memo that we're going to put out really will specify if this task is something associated with outcomes for kids and families, can it be done remotely? Because it being in person has this likelihood of virus transmission. And mm -hmm. with every single contact trace, we look to see if coworkers are being um, exposed, if families or clients are being exposed, um, or if even our providers or people who conduct um, their work with our, our families um, have the potential for exposure. Kids that are that are um, uh, that are um, committed to the state of Connecticut, you know, are we contributing to their positivity rate? You know, those are the things that we take very seriously every yeah. single day. Yep. So we're going to send that memo out tomorrow. Wanted mm -hmm. to give staff a, a heads up on the context of it. What is really important is that when it comes out, managers, supervisors, discuss it with the staff under underneath them talk about it, discuss it, put it into context. And as you said, Commissioner, every time that we make the decision um, to conduct an in-person visit, it's done through that public health perspective, yeah. that public yeah. health lens, um, and keeping in mind the safety and welfare of our staff and the children and families that we serve. So that staff should see that tomorrow. Mm -hmm. um, I think before we get into the statistics, um, this will be the last video staff see before Christmas and certainly yeah. we are in we've we've already begun um, and celebrated Hanukkah. Um, mm -hmm. So message there for staff about the holidays. Like like I said, I, you know, this is the time of the year that I look forward to the most. And, you know, I think of all the modifications that I've had to make with my own family. And I know it's hard. I know it's absolutely hard. I, you know, we'll do another one of these as we wrap up 2020. But, you know, this is Christmas week. We're in the midst of, of the Hanukkah season and whatever other um, acknowledge acknowledgments that you and your families do around this time of the year you know I, I appreciate you taking that time to really think about how you can stay connected but stay connected safely so you know Merry Christmas to everybody and from our house to yours please 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 be safe yeah. so let's jump into our stats all right well I, I can't I can't leave that by saying on behalf of all of the staff a happy birthday to you because we know <laughs> at the end of last week we, we celebrated your birthday and uh, we wish you and your family just a great and restful holiday um, season as well, Commissioner. So um, so as you indicated, we, right now in our video, we talk about the statistics. So um, the latest numbers we have are we've had 214 of our caregivers test positive. Unfortunately, um, since the last video, we had our fourth foster parent pass away mm -hmm. um, from COVID-19 related um, complications. 154 of our youth in care and 168 staff have now tested positive. Yeah, we had um we have had two um, kids in care on our um, Solnet facilities at North um, who had tested positive, and that was a part of a, a mitigation strategy we had to do there. But I think because of the f um, fast action of our medical team up there and under Dr. Rayford, we got that pretty contained, even with the staff positives there trying to isolate and contain and quarantine based on their functions. Um, we've been um, really um, following that caregiver number closely. Uh, you know, I, I'm thinking about how we analyze that data and because you know that's clearly our cohort that has shown the highest amount of course with those yeah. four uh, foster parents passing away and then you know uh, certainly that last piece with our staff um you know looking to see what you know where those transmissions have occurred you know we've seen everything from our social work staff to case aides to um, managers and directors and drivers and you know people in our administrative offices and so we've run the gamut i don't think there's any one area of our department Great. that hasn't yeah. been touched by this so um that's why it's important for us all um 3022 of us to <laughs> really take this as a universal precaution 
be safe, you know, even doing everything right when you're positive, there's certain things, or when you're even waiting for test results, there's certain things that kick in. Any questions that you have, please, please, please contact human resources, let them know the minute you know that something um, is uh, either being, we're, we're waiting for results or that you have symptoms. And again, certainly don't come to work if you're not feeling well. Absolutely, absolutely. So commissioner, on behalf of everybody, happy holidays to the entire staff. Happy holidays. Um, your work is just so tremendously appreciated and, and we'll see everybody shortly. Thanks, Ken. You too. Bye-bye.